Flyer Professional Flight Training Show is coming up this weekend then, and we're going to be there, hopefully you are too. Now there's going to be training organisations telling you you should be joining their courses, there's going to be companies, cargo companies, airlines, all telling you about why you should get a job with them. But we want to find out what is actually the truth at the moment, because there's a lot of doom mongers out there, aren't there? So, I've come to Ice Falpo, who represent 100,000 airline pilots around the world, see if we can find out some answers. Come on, let's go. Everyone's saying the economy's collapsing, it's all falling apart, there's no hope for anything, you're never going to get an airline job, etc, etc. What's your advice? Well, I think you'll find people have been saying that to young people who want a career in aviation ever since Wilbur and Orville uh, yeah. were attempting flying. Uh, there pretty much has never been a good time to get into aviation, if you believe uh, all the naysayers. Uh, Charles Lindbergh was told, don't get into aviation, it's far too dangerous and you'll never keep a job. <laughs> Uh, Juan Tripp was told, don't get into aviation, It'll never, nothing will ever come of it, and that was before he created Pan Am. The history books are littered with people telling young people, uh, people who want to change a career, not to go into aviation. There's never been a good time, and guess what, there probably never will be. Uh, doesn't stop people succeeding in aviation, doesn't stop people having, making, making good careers in aviation. Mm. So what actually is your advice then? Because people are getting a bit of a doom and gloom perspective at the moment, aren't they? But yeah, you know, I can understand why people still want to be airline pilots, of course. So should they go for it? My, my uh, advice is yes, follow that dream. Uh, there are going to be people constantly, as I've just said, telling you why you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Uh, I was told at school, don't, you just don't even think about doing that. Do something else. Do, be, do, something, uh, do something more safe. Be an accountant or, or whatever. Um, never be an accountant. Never be an accountant. <laughs> uh, uh, but the fact is, the cockpits of the world are full of people who were told at school and elsewhere, you can't be a pilot. Why do you want to be a pilot? Be something safe. They chose to follow their dreams. Uh, and by pursuit of that by believing in their own abilities, by working hard, they find themselves in the left-hand seat in command of a 777 or a 744 or an A380. Even. Mm. Right, so it is possible, if it is a little bit hard at the moment, what do you need to do? Because I know people are going to be wondering, what are those sort of top tips? How, what should you study at school? What kind of things like that? What is the secret of getting that job? If it is possible, what do you need to do? If I knew the actual secret, okay. I'd sell it, but I don't. <laughs> but I would say that if you focus on the physical science, physics, mathematics, yep. uh, or geography even, are always going to give you a leg up when you begin professional studies. Uh, there is no substitute for hard work. Uh, you have to keep focused on it. You have to keep in mind that you're talking about becoming part of a profession where you're going to be managing the lives of a large number of people. Yeah. And applying yourself with that kind of dedication and application uh, is going to be required. Furthermore, you're going to have to continue to improve, uh, improve your abilities throughout your career. Mm. You're going to have recurrent checks uh, and so on throughout your life and, and work as a pilot. You're going to be retrained. Are there things that you can do sort of outside of high school, outside of school, whatever you're currently at, that kind of give you a better chance to get that airline job? I mean, do they like to see that you ran a society or something like that? Absolutely. I mean, if the more you can prove your abilities as an av or your depth of interest in aviation, it's right. always going to help. Uh, one of the people who will be talking to you if, you if you go for a job as a pilot, you'll be talking to, especially early on in smaller airlines, you'll be talking to the chief pilot. Mm -hmm. He'll be deciding whether he wants you on his team or not. Right. Uh, that guy is in, or, or, or lady is in, is in love with aviation. Mm -hmm. They want people who are also in love with aviation. Right. And you, if you could, the more you can demonstrate that you've been involved in aviation uh, as an interest, whether, whether you took part in a society or a club, whether you uh, worked at an airfield, even. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be the most beginning parts, so, you know, tiny acorns thing. A lot of people start their flying career working, taking bookings at a flying club. Right. Maybe they take part of their pay in, in the form of flying lessons. Yeah. Uh, and it so shows that it shows that determination it? and that belief in aviation as a yeah. career. And those are all things that are going to help. It also immerses you into the industry mm. uh, at a very early stage. One question I've really got to ask you is about integrated or modular courses. Now, one is basically you do it non stop, and the other one you do it bit by bit. And I know at the Fly Show people are going to sell us, try and sell us both sides. What's your feeling on that? Well, 
At Alfalpa, our concern has always been that we want to see a training system which delivers to the to the flight deck the best possible first officer. Of course, yeah. Uh, we don't particularly are, aren't particularly concerned which system it is, provided the standard levels are reached. Now, whether you go modular or integrated, you're still going to reach the same. You're going to have to require to to reach the same standard mm. at the end when you uh, sit your uh, ATPL writtens, uh, when you take your uh, CPL skills test or whatever. Uh, you're going to have the same have to reach the same standard to acquire those licenses, uh, whether you go either either way. There are pros and there are cons. Mm. Which one's better? I can't honestly say. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things where each individual has to look at their own situation uh, uh, and decide for themselves which way is going to be the most uh, effective means for them, mm. how they can achieve those goals, those dreams they, they, they're Got looking you. for. So in a way, talk to as many people as you can to find out as much info as you can. Quite literally. Talk, get to the airfield, yeah. talk to the guys, the instructors especially. Most mm. of them, of course, will be on modular, but not all. <laughs> uh, but talk to the instructors, get their feedback. They'll talk to you. Yeah. They really will. Some people seem to have got this kind of rather mundane image of aviation. You know, it's become a bit like a glorified bus driver and all these kind of things you keep hearing banded around. Look, we were talking just before we started this interview about how much we love flying still. For those people that have still got any doubts... Can you tell me some of what you were just saying again? Well, I mean, the analogy I always use is I, I would uh, defy anyone to have an office. Uh, well, that, let's look at the downsides first. Of course, it's grotty to get up at four o'clock on a rainy Sunday morning to go to work when any normal person's in bed. Uh, but, you know, a little while later, when you break out of the overcast at dawn, uh, into a rising sun. There are very few things in life which are as great as that. And you know what? You're getting paid to do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to travel so, amazing places and see well, these things. Well, you, you, you know, it's hard work and so on and so yeah. forth. But it really is a, a, an environment where uh, you just can't top it. I had a, I had an email just uh, just yesterday from a colleague of mine. Uh, which he, he shot a sunrise, or I think it was actually a sunset. Uh, he flies in South Africa, uh, just north of Durban somewhere. Sunset shot through his HUD on mm. his 737-800, uh, and it was just a great picture. Mm. Uh, you can't get that anywhere else. So that's, that's, uh, Fantastic. A final message, then, for people that might correct. In fact, if you want to tell them directly, <laughs> feel free. If they're thinking about, maybe I should go for an airline job, maybe I'm quite inspired by it, but I don't know whether I should... What do you want to say to them? Well, I mean, the honest thing is, is don't give up the dream. Uh, if you feel that aviation's for you, get into it. Don't, don't give up. Don't listen to the people who tell you not to do it. Uh, go for it. Become part of, it sounds a trite thing to say, but become part of the brother stroke sisterhood of, of, of aviation. Uh, I'm lucky enough to work uh, at, with IFALPA, uh, the International Federation of Airline Parts Associations, and uh, work with pilots from all over the world. And one thing I've found is it really, truly is um, not just a profession, but a bit beyond that. There is a fraternity of it. Uh, and we like to say there are two types of people in the world, pilots, not pilots. The only division's <laughs> worth worrying about. Well, clearly there are opportunities out there at the moment. You can get a commercial flying job. It's just a question of having the determination and following the right path down the line. So if you can get to the fly show this weekend, do come along because there'll be so much more information. If not, we'll have a roundup for you next week.